Uh, British comedian Dave Ismay was told by his doctors he had just three months to live. So he set out to complete his bucket list, spending every dime he had, only to find out that weeks later, he wasn't dying after all. It was a scene straight out of the movie last holiday. I got three weeks to live? I feel great. I just finished a fat flush. I'm sure a disciplined woman such as yourself has a very useful purpose for this money. I'm just going to blow it. <laughs> Dave Ismay joins us alive and well now from England via Skype. All right, Hi. Dave, <laughs> first, uh, what did the doctor say you had? The doctor said, Genk, that uh, I had cirrhosis of the liver and uh, it was through severe alcohol abuse and that if I carried on the way I was going, I had three months to live. There was nothing they could do for me. And are you a mean drunk? No, I, I used to, I enjoy a drink. I, I enjoy a social drink. I mean, heaven forbid, people who don't drink when they wake up in the morning, that's the best they're going to feel all day. But no, I'm not a heavy drinker. And I, and I, you know, you, you suspect as soon as I was told that, I thought this, this can't be true. But he, he was very convincing, believe me. And how freaked out were you? Um, oh, I was freaked out. I was freaked out. I, I, I drove home with my head totally in the world. I took the wrong turning about eight times. There was no concentration. I was wondering how on earth I'd tell my wife. Um, it was a dreadful hour, I think. Probably the worst I can ever remember. So what was on your bucket list and how much of it did you get done? Well, the first thing I wanted to do was buy a really comfortable car. Um, I, if I was going to go out, I was going to go out in comfort. I made sure it was a grey car, I didn't want to buy a black car in case the neighbours thought I, thought I was buying a hearse and saving money. Um, <laughs> the second thing was the book, my, the book on a great friend of mine, uh, Bob Monkhouse, um, which is this one here, which I was determined to write. He's a legend in England. He's been a great, he was a great friend of mine for 20 years and I was determined to write it. It's the book that we all had inside it, so I was determined to do that. I've always wanted to visit Australia and I've always wanted to visit all of the uh, Ryder Cup courses that, uh, of course, the Ryder Cup has been played on. And one of the few I hadn't played was in Ireland. So, uh, and that and playing in a pantomime, um, again, when I was reasonably uh, on television, a lot of times in the 80s, I was asked to do pantomime. But I always refused because I thought it was hard work. But suddenly I realized I didn't want to go and meet my maker and all the other clowns in the heavens up above and tell them that I'd never done a pantomime. All right, Dave, I, I, so at the end, you do most of the things on your list. And can I ask how much money you spent? And then was it worth it at the end? Did you, were you glad you did it or are you kind of disappointed you're broke? Well, no, I'm, I'm not exactly broke. I'm not as skint as, a, as an Irish bank, for instance, but we got <laughs> through, I suppose, about, we committed about 50,000 pounds. And um, it, the money is not important. The, the fact that you are here uh, is important. And I, and I think the important thing for anybody anybody listening, it shouldn't take a kick up the backside like I received to actually go ahead and do the things that you want to do. We're all different. And the things we want to do in life, we should do them. We should do them while we've got the chance. Life is not a rehearsal. Get the things done that you want to do. Don't wait until you're given a job. All right. That's that, that, one thing that I learned. That's a great and powerful lesson. Davis May, thank you so much for joining us. And thanks thank for being you. alive. <laughs> it worked no, out nicely you. for everybody. <laughs>